Yes, I'm ready. All right, you are all set to go. Great, great. Thank you, Liz, and uh, thank you to On One Software once again. It feels like old home week. Um, and welcome to all of you listeners. It's great to uh, have you join me today. And of course, uh, I'm always excited, especially when there's new products that come out. And now we're introducing once again the Perfect Photo Suite 8. It's uh, it's been a long time, and there's new products, new exciting thing for us to work with. And so I'm glad to be able to share that with all of you today. So first thing first, for any of you who've seen this before or watched me in the past, uh, I am a professional wedding photographer and studio owner in Southern California, and uh, my studio is basically a pretty much 99% wedding photography based and um, throughout the week not only are we doing what most of you are doing meeting with couples but we're also in the world of designing and uh, building albums and editing and retouching so this is why this is exciting to me is to be able to share one of my favorite tools and, and I know most of you we all use uh, of course uh, Photoshop and certainly if you're using uh, Lightroom or Aperture to convert your files so I'm going to kind of give you in this short time we have together as much as I can I, I, I don't think I can do some heavy lifting for you which I you'll see here in some of my images there's some that that I've actually in the past uh, featured that go from you can see an image that's uh, a snow filled day even though we're in California uh, to just some dreamy relaxed images uh, enhancing colors is also one of our favorite features to do um, skies, enhancing skies, adding skies. These are some of the features that I found, you know, using the Perfect Photo Suite um, in the past. And so, as we've gone through here, you'll see textures, um, softening is also part of the big products that are in here. Um, again, just kind of adding more tone and depth to these images. And so, I, of course, I'm a, a Photoshop Power user, but when you're doing many albums and you're producing many photos and trying to enhance and keep it consistent that's why this software has enabled us to do that so whether it's myself or a couple of our production people we all can kind of share a, a similar look instead of trying to recreate it every single time so I'm going to kind of take you from a little bit of light work um, and possibly take you through kind of some of the typical enhancements what I do so this is just a kind of a few examples here you'll see again adding skies textures so you can really get in kind of crazy trying to keep adding things and so that's why and I'm sure all of you spend most of your time um, um, clicking away right so let's get out of here Lightroom and let me kind of back out for a couple things so first and foremost for and again everybody that's online there's a different probably level of photographers there's ones that maybe don't work into um, in Lightroom and maybe don't do Photoshop and so the perfect photo suite 8 is certainly a standalone so this works great if you don't need to launch Lightroom to grab a raw file um, you just want to go in and maybe enhance certain things. You can dir directly launch the photo suite by itself. And here you can see an application by selecting one of your folders. It's easy accessible to you. Now, most of us that are doing um, Lightroom work, obviously, by simply doing the same thing here. Let's go into one of my folders that uh, has our images ready to enhance. Now, of course, all the files that I have are raw files. So that's usually a question I get all the time. Is this only for JPEG? But every image that we work on are raw files so we'll, we'll touch base on how those are being created but most of the time again it's usually working on a single file after I process the proofing so I'll talk about that in a couple seconds and then of course any of you power users if you are already using Photoshop this is the same thing where it all started at we're using the Creative Suite Adobe Photoshop CC with the bridge as well and so this is quite simple same thing here it will dock right here in your panel so anytime you want to bring in a raw file directly, and you don't necessarily have to you know, be in Lightroom, this is another way that I usually do that. So, so let's backtrack. Let's do a little quick history here of the process because there's a couple different ways of doing this. So let's minimize this and kind of get you started. So first and foremost, I always get that question. What you're looking at right now are raw files. And the question I always get too is, you know, when do you do the enhancements? When do you do the retouching on these images? Well, I guess just to throw this in here, you know, most of us are photographing numerous amount of photographs, whether it's at a wedding or engagement session. So, um, the first and foremost, most of us are very familiar with uh, converting our files. So, this is maybe the file that you obviously have brought in. You know, I'll go through the develop module quickly, the same thing as most of us will do. And inside the same thing as I will go through with proper white balancing, lightning, darkening and images, pretty much just a minor detail. And that's usually why I'm in Lightroom most of the time is just to do that 
proofing, if you would call that, for the, for the bride and groom to view the first time. So most of my processing is either going to come by simply using uh, a raw file later on, bringing that into Photoshop, or obviously I can just launch directly the perfect photo suite directly with a raw file. But mostly in here, I'm just usually just doing the normal uh, conversion, I call that. I don't spend hours trying to enhance every image, even though we've got adjustment tools and so on. I usually just keep it standard. So any of these images you see are pretty much just standard images. There's nothing done to them. And in a few minutes, I'll bring an image like this in, and we'll end up with something like this in the, in the perfect photo suite. So let's kind of get started. I'll, I'll work once from, from Lightroom, and then I'll move move on to um, to Photoshop as well. But again, it's there's two ways of doing it, and this is just my preference. But once again, when I make the conversion out of Lightroom, they're just neutral images. I'm not trying to enhance proofs. And the, and the main marketing tip to that, just as I can make a quick note for you, is that you know I don't want to enhance the proof so much that they don't come back and want to order enlargements from you. So anytime I offer to do some of these um, what I call different enhanced files, it's because they're required to either purchase a photo or it's an image that I will actually put into um, to the album. That's the many times when we'll do the actual enhancement, but not in Lightroom. All right, so let's do. Let's start with an engagement session. I just want to show you just a quick image on um, a close-up. Let's kind of move over to one of these files here. Let's find one and pull this here for. Let's just pull this one here for. I'm going to try to work on like three different images. I'm going to start out with just a little quick toning, and then we'll move on to some more enhancement. But the way I achieve this is once I've already done, as I mentioned a few seconds ago, I've done the color balance on the image. Again, gone through these series of sliders to, of course, whether I'm opening shadows, etc. That's another seminar on its own. But then I'll come up here to the file menu and click on plugin extras. Now in the suite, you'll notice I can either launch the entire suite. Let's close that panel, sorry. And down uh, there we go. And it's launch the plugin extra. That's where you locate it. Or I can go directly into one of these applications. So if you launch it directly like that, it'll obviously now give you the whole suite. And at that point you can decide whether or not you want to uh, use one of the effects. You want to go into the perfect portrait. So I'll show you kind of one of my favorite here. So I just launched it, what you saw earlier. If not, I could have gone direct right into any one of these applications, right? So the first question I get is, if I just want to simply add, you don't have to get crazy with adding textures, but I, one of the favorite features they've always had, and it's probably been at least in the third or fourth version, is kind of adding some type of kind of vintage style to the to a photo. So if you go into basically here it is the um, enhance is one of them is I can do one option and all you do is just click once and it'll load that image in there as well now the benefit of using Lightroom is you can copy for us as well so you're not you have an option and I can show you that in the, in the next version of editing the original but most of the time we're making a copy so here even if I weren't going into Lightroom I just like to show this feature using, using the perfect enhance I can still make the adjustments here. So this is obviously clearly for people who aren't converting files. There may be JPEG shooters. I can still make enhancements in here as far as just the tonality, opening up shadows, darkening shadows. So that's one feature here, right? So obviously if you're Photoshop Lightroom users, you won't need to probably go in this direction, but that's an option that I'll sometimes use without even launching uh, any of those other applications. So that's why I love being in this suite. So if I do make adjustments here, again, even on warming up the image, you've got the full color temperature here, changing the tint. What I like is this slider here, I'm talking about vibrance, because a lot of times when you're adding vibrance, it's accelerating all colors. And as you probably know, and in, in using Lightroom, you know, when you see a saturation slider, saturating is saturating the entire color tones. It's everything that has colors being saturated. Vibrance usually just usually adds colors to the less colorful tones, but this is one feature here that they've added called Reduce Vibrant on Skin. So by clicking on that, you'll notice, and it's very faint, that it'll remove some of that excess vibrance that you added there. So that's a really unique item as well. And of course, those of you who like the vignette, you have your options here as well. There's both some preset ones here, which I like, and we'll talk about presets in a minute. And of course, you can certainly do the same thing here. You can either pick one of the presets by dragging this menu down, and each of them are adjustable. So even if I have that center spot, I can still make my adjustments here. Okay. So again, you a lot of people think this is strictly just for filters and so on, but it really allows you to do more things. And even if you're in here and you just needed that extra adjustment, it allows me to do that too. And same with here. It gives you the choice of doing it kind of subtle 
of course, soft. So you have all these options here. And let me just add one more quick thing to why I've always been attracted to this perfect photo suite is because, you know, most of the actions you have are a single click, um, maybe a global adjustment. Here, every, most of these features are all paintable. If you go over to the tool section here, you'll see you'll have options of using your retouch brush, erase tool, cropping. So there's other options here, not just adding filters. So I've always enjoyed that because this allows me to add more of a, of a retouch style, more of a, a kind of a uh, paint-in type instead of just the whole global effect. So that's why I really like this, uh, uh, the whole panel and the whole suite all together. All right. So and of course, sharpening is another option. I usually don't do sharpening until the end in, in Photoshop, but that's an option if you prefer sharpening advanced. So let's say you've already made your little minor adjustment. What's new here as well is you can either hit apply and that'll return the results obviously back into if you were in Lightroom. Or what I like here is you click on this little arrow and it'll now allow us to do, which I think was a great idea, is not only apply the effect, but see now it'll let me move on to the other options. So in this case, I'm really trying to get into the perfect effects because I talked about adding some type of vintage filter to it. And so I could have went directly to that when I hit plug in extras in, in Lightroom or I had just entered the whole suite so I can show you this feature that allows us now to not necessarily go back to Lightroom, then have to come back again, but apply that single module, as I call it, that application, and then let us now use some of the other items in the suite. So that to me was a great feature right there. So, okay, so now as you can see, for those of you familiar with this interface, you still have your filter stack here. And, um, and if any of you are, again, new to this, you can, they have some great uh, videos on there, both Liz and Peter, or I should say Dan, I put together some great videos on tutorials on each of these modules, but um, it pretty much works that same. You've got each stack where you're applying each of these presets, and then in a second I'll show you the filter options as well. But here's where I was trying to get for you. One of my favorites was the vintage filters. And the other great thing is same thing. This has been probably one of the leaders in, in both the plugins and some of these filters is that they've allowed us to look at single view. So even this little button down here, you check this, which looks like a little boxes, that now allows you to look through here and pick out exactly which of those filters you want. And it'll let you, by clicking it, so one more time, I always have a habit of double clicking. When you double click, what that does, that applies the filter. So if you just single click, those of us Mac users are all into double clicking, then that lets you just visualize in advance. And so I believe that they were the first ones to kind of apply this so you could see what that looks like in advance. So if I want to go with this blue yellow, then I would just click it, which I applied there. And it leaves you here on a single stack where we're used to calling that layers. And what allows us to do the same thing. This is the other thing that, that has made this suite so popular is not only are we able to paint in certain effects instead of global, like an action of some type, um, but you also have another important feature is all of our blending modes that's been very valuable as well. So not only do you see the effect here, but simply by scrolling down, this is basically a live view, just like you would do in Photoshop, and now make your choices. And I, you know, I like most of you, I, I experiment a lot. I go through each one of these. I lower the opacity. I max out the sliders, which you'll see in a few seconds. So do the same thing. I do a lot of clicking and experimenting to see what each filter will allow me to do. So once you get this effect here, and if for some reason you want to choose a different one, all you do is just click that, and now it'll apply that effect here. Now, the way you stack these is you see there's a plus and minus button. So if I didn't like that effect, I can hit minus, which, which I just did. That will remove that. If I hit plus, that now adds me an empty layer. Okay. So in this case, let's add that filter back in there. I just clicked it. There's your filter there. And so once again, I have a couple options. If I want to add an adjustment brush, you notice here it's added just like you would like a mask. It allows us to now paint in or paint out. And I certainly could have grabbed the brush here above. If you would type obviously B as in brush, you've got an option of painting in, painting out. It's got that same great features. Same thing with your opacity. You can move the sliders here as well. And of course, your bracket keys work the same way in Photoshop. So we've all got that shortcuts. So you have that great feature where we've added now 
an option to paint out. Now, in this particular case, I may not paint anything out until we get to some of the other effects, but that's another great feature. And if I don't need that, certainly I do the same thing. I can remove that. So here's one other last feature, because this is really just to show you a single global effect, which I know a lot of you are used to, but this is just a simple way of adding some of these. Now, the other great part is here is I can adjust even the amount of that filter. Take a look at all the different styles. Even though you've already pre-selected, on the left, you can come in and create and adjust your own. So some of these I've done, let's say I've done this effect here, and look, wow, I didn't really like that, but now I can come in here and adjust just the amount that I didn't like the part of that, right? So this allows you to create your own, and you can actually save these as a preset as well. So if you click under preset, and let's say that's the look that you like and you like that tone after you've built it, then you can save that and then later on you can come back, click on your presets tab here on the left hand side and you can see here where you any of the ones that you've created. So I have here Frank's preset MacBook Pro. So those are the ones maybe I've created in this section myself. And so it allows me now, if I'm doing an album and I have multiple photos, I want them to look the same. So you can play all day long but certainly the whole goal is to create a consistent look in the album. So that's why the preset portion is so important. Okay. So again, I invite you to play with some of these sliders and there's certain recipes that some would call it certain adjustments, but here we call them presets. So I always say same thing. You can, you can play with these presets when you first use the program, but I find myself many times by coming strictly to here, look at all the features I can add to this, which we're going to come back in a minute into the effects and adjust and add and build presets on my own. So I've kind of do a little bit of both. These presets on the left will get you started, but obviously as you get more advanced, you're going to find that you find yourself many times in this panel. Okay, so let's get out of here. This is just was a quick, simple one showing you how this is integrated between using any of the, the applications within there. So if you want to keep this, you hit apply. I'm just going to hit cancel. And of course, are you sure you want to cancel? So I'm going to say, okay, right? I know a lot of us have not hit save before, and we know what happens when you don't hit save, right? Okay, so now here's another approach. So let's go back and grab another file. So if you are in this application directly, I can hit browse. And here's a little tip for any of you that are PC users. If any of you are PC users, if you ever open a folder on your desktop, you'll notice that you cannot see a raw file, right? You'll, you, there is no thumbnail preview unless you have some third-party application. So many times on my PC, I'm using both, uh, platforms. We use PC and Macs. And so for those of us in my office that prefer the PC, they'll open this as a browser. Now you can view your thumbnails here and you can adjust that accordingly. As you go larger down below, you can certainly do the same thing here. You can go single, toggle back and forth. So this allows you, if you're a PC user, to look at that image right away instead of having it bring it into Lightroom and so on. So that's a little quick tip for those PC users. But Mac, obviously, allows us to look at, a, at that in advance. So, all right, let's do go into another one before we get into a, kind of some heavy lifting stuff. Let's look at that perfect portrait. It's another one of my favorite ones. It's a very quick, easy one uh, to use. And so I'm going to pick a head and shoulder of a bride. And so in this application, if I'm inside this application, not instead of, I should say, Lightroom, it's quite easy. I've already selected the folder here on my desktop here. I've come down to my folder on the desktop, navigate there, and once again, and there's that folder. So all I have to do is select that raw file, and in this case, I want to enter the perfect portrait. Now, see, here's where I wanted to show you earlier, and I bypass this for you in, in Lightroom, but it's going to allow you that option. So if you want to edit as a copy, you, it allows you to do that. You can edit the original, which usually in Lightroom, these features are highlighted because maybe you're going to bring in the, the, the uh, Lightroom adjustments with you and then it gives you those options in Lightroom. And here, since I'm already in the suite, obviously it's just going to edit as a copy. Once again, you can change here if you prefer a TIFF or JPEG file. Obviously, most of us prefer the PSD file. Um, I'm working in an RGB profile, so any of you can adjust whatever profile that you're working with. Usually, it's this one right here. And then same thing here, whether you work in 8 and 16-bit. So usually, I try to use the maximum uh, opportunity for me, so I'll go with the 16-bit for now. When I get into Photoshop, as you many of you know, some of those tools will be um, black, blanked out. You can't use those, so usually at the last minute I will convert back to an 8-bit in Photoshop if there's certain tools that won't allow me to, to use them, So, but I'll do that at that last minute. So let's click OK, 
and let's have some fun here. Let's do a little quick retouching on the face. And I really like this one. And for those of you who have already played with this um, retouching part, you'll see why. I mean, it's this is probably one of the most, uh, probably the best one of the face retouching uh, tools that I've ever used, mainly because it's detecting the face on its own by strictly, once it's launched by itself, you'll notice that it's already detected the face. Now, up here, and you look in your tool well, as we call it, you notice this first one, that's the one that's your face detection right there. So if you have multiple faces, you click this, and if there's three or four people in the photo, you can click on each one, and it'll detect the face. And of course, down below will be your face edit tool. That's the one we're going to work on once we get, obviously, into this photo. So let's click on that. And just a little quick retouching on her face. This is how easy it gets. I'm going to remove this little key thing here for you. Now take a look what it's done already. It's already detected many of the features that you'll see listed here. We're going to go through it on the right side. So it's already detected the skin. It's going to let us do some color correction and even work on the eyes and mouth. So for any of you who have not seen this yet, this is the magic part right here. It's already pre-selected that. Now the way you know that it's done that is take a look at the mask down below as I click here where it said after, I can ask it to choose any mask color I want. So if you prefer to use like Photoshop, the red mask, it's now showing you right here all the areas that are in red are not affected. So the areas that are, are obviously the ones that are. So now by simply painting in, you notice up here, let's go back up to the top, you see where it says mode, not skin, or add to skin. So this is the hair, to me this is not skin, so when we do some Right now, adjustments, I want to make sure that this is not being affected. Now, do you notice right here, I've got my mouse trying to, trying to hide the skin on her neck, perhaps, or, and it's not working. So here's another unique feature right here called the perfect brush. That one allows you, if you check that, to see what it says there? It's doing a self-masking for you. So whatever area that you're, that little arrow in the middle is touched, or actually it's a little marker there, it's not affecting anything outside of that. So here, because it's similar to the outside here, it's not affecting that. But if I turn it off, then now, you see that? It's not trying to guess what section that it's trying to mask in. So if you want to click that both ways, it works if you're trying to affect other areas and trying to avoid other tones. And I'll probably show you that later on. Uh, but if you go through here, right now what I'm doing, so I just don't want the other areas affected. So when I'm going to add some softness, Anything that's in red right now won't be affected, okay? And it's done a pretty good job. You see, I can just clean up a little bit. I, of course, I'm going to spend more time later on, but right here I can kind of make sure that it's not affecting anything else. So right now, when I come back in here to after, and we make these adjustments, it's going to only affect the skin area. Now, one quick thing to clean up here. Let's zoom in a little bit by obviously hitting your command or control plus or minus here. And it's going to clarify here for us. Now, the next thing we want to do is you notice we want to kind of clean up some of that area there as well. And, you'll, and I'll explain some of these other features here when we get into more of the other options here on the right-hand side. But basically what you're going to do now is we want to get into cleaning this up here. Okay, hold on. Let's get this here. Oops, let me go back to here. There we go. It's thinking here. Let's go back to that mode. Sorry, I clicked it on this. And the other thing about this too is that a lot of photographers enjoy is that you can paint in these effects. You'll see under each panel here up on top, you'll, each one will have its options here. So whether you lower the opacity, you keep the feathering to your choice just by using, it's kind of like what we call in Photoshop, the scrubbies. And then of course the size of the brush can obviously be used back and forth. But what we're trying to do right now is adjust this around the eyes, okay? So this makes sure that right now when we go to the panel on the left, I can kind of clean that up a little bit. It takes a few seconds. I'm always kind of rushing. I don't know about you guys, but I'm like, come on, let's get this thing going. We got things to do. So you notice that one dot in the middle, that's where you line that up right in the middle of the eye. Okay, so it's, it does a pretty good job. Look, I didn't really have to touch the one on the left. And then same here with the lip area because it's going to enhance the colors of the lips in a few minutes and even the teeth area. So I'm trying to make sure I clean that up perfectly. So if you notice here, it takes a few seconds just to get that just right. So when you come over on this section now, and just quickly to go here through, I won't go through every single one, but basically it's detected the face, the skin for us. And so the first thing is, there's a, one of the popular ones that they created as well is the blemish slider. Now granted, if you have a client that has excessive blemishes, we have a couple options here. One, 
we can obviously come up here and grab our retouch brush. This actually does have a retouch brush in it. So if I want to come in a few minutes and clean up some of these areas, I can do that before I actually start doing some of these other sliders, okay? So I can click on this brush right here, and you'll now notice that in a few seconds here that allow me now, it changes over. Just by clicking on here, I can now remove some of that. So again, if, if there's a client that has some real heavy work needed, certainly I probably would have done that in Photoshop in advance, but if there's some last minute cleanup I want to do before I start softening, I can come through here and do that in advance as well. Okay? So again, these are all these great tools right here without me having to leave into another application. So there you go. So I just did that real quickly. So let's go back and click here and now allow us to make our adjustments as we were earlier. So same thing, it retains your masks here. It's already retained that. You can make your adjustments as I showed you earlier. Now I can come back here and what it means by blemishes here, you know, again, if somebody has really harsh uh, skin complexion, this is just going to smooth out some of the dark areas in here, okay? So it's not going to remove all the ones. That's why some of the larger ones I remove myself. Smoothing of the skin. Now here's the thing that I, I always, you'll laugh with me when I say this, but I always share with everybody when, when you're doing any of these, especially with the software like this, is I always max out every slider. And I, and I joke about that because I say that's how I get my money's worth, okay? Is <laughs> I always max them out. Don't be afraid to experiment with these sliders because you won't know until you maximize what it looks like. Granted, that was too much, but now you can say, hey, what is this effect going to look like? I'll zoom in, I'll zoom out, and make my adjustments accordingly, right? I don't want to get too smooth. I want to keep some texture in the skin. Same with shine. If you notice, most brides have some really great makeup done, so you're not too worried about that. So I can adjust some of the shine there if I feel it's needed, kind of match that down a little bit. Same with shadows. This will kind of soften the shadow areas a little bit. If, you know, just some of them that are a little bit harsh. Certainly uh, it's not going to uh, fix anything that's been, you know, not done photographically correct. Here's another major feature that I don't think most of this third-party programs have at all, and it's called the texture slider. That is, will help build some of that texture back in. So if you just happen to have one that's been a little bit too soft, you can play with this texture slider, once again, adding just a little bit of texture back into it as well. And same with the evenness as well, kind of blending some of the tones within that area. So again, I kind of invite you to go through each one. And you notice this little checkbox here says face only. So if you don't, I know earlier we kind of already masked out this area, but this one obviously is another area you can click just to make sure, and it's on by default anyways. Now the last two sections are pretty self-explanatory but they're pretty amazing too so let's say you wanted to do a little color correction you want to add a little bit of warmth I can move up the amount a little bit so if you just want to warm it up just a little bit you can see here you have that option of warming it up just that right amount now what on one has done from day one from in, in I remember their first software is they've actually kind of analyzed they went through all the different skin tones in advance I've seen this feature in each one of their suites as they upgraded and you notice you have the different ethnicities in here and it, it already detects it by default which is quite amazing so that's what I enjoy too you can kind of experiment so if you have some a little bit darker complected again you can make those adjustments but most of the time it does a pretty amazing job detecting that for yourself so that's how I'll do that but I think most of us once again if you've done it in Lightroom, some advanced editing or enhancements, you've probably done a little bit of color correcting there, but this feature is there for that. And then last but not least, which is my favorite, this is, I don't, again, I don't know how to do this any easier time, time consuming wise, having to do it manually, it is same thing with the eyes. If you turn this off, let's take a look at the eyes here. You know, it already kind of defaults, so if I can kind of zoom in here a little bit for you guys, there we go. And that's turned off, so it kind of defaults that, but I'm going to max it out so we can make it look really scary for you guys here. But you can see it's already done that. You can see the before and after. If I hit the preview, that's before. Even look at the skin complexion, what I've done. I'm hitting the Command or Control P. Look at what we've done so far. Now, if I wasn't talking, of course, I've probably already done this in seconds for you, but it's cleaned it up. And look at the texture. It's already kept the details in there for me as well. That's what I like about this soft of uh, the fusion part of the face is it's kept the integrity of the skin. So you've got the whitening of the, of the eyes, which obviously I don't get too crazy there. And then even with detail, this one I love, you notice that it's put that center dot right in the middle of the eye, so that's detecting that. So by moving the detail, now it's kind of sharp and it's added contrast to the eye. I'm exaggerating that for you because remember, I want you guys to see that. And now obviously you want to back that off, but look at what it's added, it just pops the eyes. So let's look at that same thing. There's your before, 
and then there's your after. That's great. I love that. So people always say, how do you get the eyes so crisp and without over sharpening the whole image? And I think that's what happens in, with uh, some of these images. We over sharpen the entire image, but in most cases, the viewer, your client, look at the sharpest portion of a photo and when your whole image is globally sharp it kind of confuses the eye but if I back off and back down and just look strictly right at the let's go here to the before and the after if I look strictly just at that and we'll do that in a minute you'll see you're just looking right at that, that. let's finish this first and I'll, I'll turn this off so you can see that all right and then last but not least here is how about working with the teeth and I know same thing here if you max this out see that obviously it's got that super white look and if it's too white for you same thing you make your adjustments and then the last slider is the vibrance which is now working adding a little bit extra punch right here to the lip color so basically when you've gone from that instantly okay let's come back over here obviously we don't need to retouch you can hit H here if you want to move around in your image here but there's your image. So let's take a look at the before and after. I'm going to zoom in here a little bit for you. And then we'll bring another image and have a little bit more fun than this because this is easy. So here, if I hit the control or command P, there's your before. Take a look at the skin. We re did a little retouching on the face, even here on the top. Even with that blemish slider, it can remove some of those darker areas. And then when I hit the control or command P, here we go. Let's come back into here like this. There you go. That's exactly what we did. And so even with some of that, I can come in and under the eyes a little bit as well and soften in here, grab that same retouch brush. So you can do some of that advanced, but that's quite easy. But what's most impressive is when I hit save and close, same thing applies here is that I'm allowed to look at the end and you'll see how crisp and clean that looks just in seconds. So, all right, let's move on to one final image, uh, kind of more of the heavy lifting stuff, the one that you'll notice most of my images look like. Let's do that. I know you're thinking, okay, let's get past this, Frank. We, we know how to retouch a face, but I think it's one of the daily workflow things that we're doing. I clicked on this arrow real quick. I'm not going to use the same image, but I just want to click once again because this has been one of my favorite features is that I don't have to just save and close. I said earlier to go back, back in the Lightroom, back into the folder and bring this in. I can now add more effects to it. So if I want to add some vignetting, maybe I'll go back to obviously to the enhance. If I want to add a, a texture, I can go back into the perfect layer. So I have all these areas I can keep adding without necessarily doing that. So in this case, I'm just going to cancel it because we don't need to save and close that. And let's bring in an image that's kind of one of the kind of one of my signature panoramic images so you guys can look at that as well. So once again, if you go into let's go to Lightroom. I know a lot of you probably use Lightroom. And let's pick an image in here for us so you can see basically what we want to do here. And let's pick one here that's kind of fairly easy for us. All right, let's pick on this one here because I've kind of done a little before and after for you guys already. See that? Kind of cheated there in advance. So let's do that. So this time, same thing. I can either right click on that image. And by the way, let me back up for two seconds. Remember what I said earlier? I, I do a lot of the adjustments here as far as, again, color correction, exposure. I love the shadows. A lot of times this has been one of the great sliders for us to use. I'll try to keep everything neutral. And hopefully I have a few seconds to show you some quick black and white too because that's cool. Um, and same with the whites. If you want to bring down some of the lighter area, this is all valuable because what I try to do in my images is, is it's going to look flat. A lot of my images that I'm creating that final effect will look flat out of the process mode like this. But I'm really just hunting for leaving texture here in the gown and leaving detail in the tuxedo, which I do in my, in my series when I do black and whites, is I, I do a whole topic on that because then I can always add contrast later, but it's hard to now pull detail later on. So I don't get too crazy. I don't do clarify anything like that unless it's something I'm trying to do quick here, but I, I prefer to keep it neutral as I said earlier, keep my detail, keep my highlights, keep the exposure sometimes a little, little bit less because, I, again, I'm, I want to keep detail in a lot of my items here. So what I'll do now, since I know that I want to add an effect to it, can also right-click on it. I can right-click and go directly to perfect effects and then and start working on that. Now, here's that section here, you see, where it says edit a copy with Lightroom adjustments, and that's what you want. Whatever little fine-tuning I just did, I want to retain that. And what it's also going to do, if you notice here in the top left corner here, it's preparing that file for me and it's going to create a, a copy for us as well. So when you come back, you'll still have the original one and obviously a copy there. So here we are now into the effects. And so 
you know, you, all of you know we can spend an hour on this thing creating some fun stuff, but I'm just going to give you the two or three items that I, I prefer in this program. And uh, the effects has always been one of my favorites throughout, even though I bounce around between the, the layers, adding some textures directly, but I like to kind of fine tune that. So the, one of the first things I look at is after I've made those adjustments is a lot of us like to add a little detail in, this, in our photographs. So remember, you start out with your base layer, or in, the, in this case, you're in the filter stack, and then on, on top is now our empty layer. So by selecting here, and again, I even have my preset. These are ones that I've already pre-built my own. See, here's this. Frank's presets. See, I've already created a series of ones that I kind of my favorites that I can kind of work around. But you have two options here, okay? So real quickly, you have two options. You can use all the hard work that the fine folks here at On One have produced for you, or when you get a little more advanced here, you can now select the same effects in here and build your own. Okay, so I invite you to try both. So remember earlier we did vintage. I can adjust here or I can just use some of the presets that they had built here in advance on the left. Okay, so you can work either way. In this case, I want to work on some contrast. So same thing here. If I want to go and build it from scratch, I can click on the dynamic contrast. That's going to open up below all my options here. See that? It's going to open up all the fields. This is why I invite you power users to look at, because now you can create your own. We can paint in our own as well, okay? Or if you're first-time users, you want to play around, which I still invite all of us to do, is look through here and take a look at it. Now, remember when by clicking on this box here, okay, it'll allow you to click on it. It'll bring in, same thing, you want to look for the dynamic contrast. It'll bring in all those filters, okay? And then you're going to go through here and select the one that you want. So, and then it will show it to you in each one. So in our case, obviously, we're already going to, we know which one we want, but if you want to see which style, just go through here and look at each one, okay? So let's go back because I know I want to use this dynamic contrast. There we go. And so I'm going to come back on this panel. So once again, let's click on the preset and then come to the panel so you'll see. So if I click on this one, just single click on it, and let's make sure you see up here on the stack above. i got to kind of go back on my screen. You notice it's already added it here, and it's even added here a mask for you. So you have a couple options. You obviously can take your brush here, click on that masking brush there, and there's your options, and it still works the same way. If you hit the X key on your keyboard, X is an X-ray, just like in Photoshop, it'll toggle. You notice the little minus sign and the plus in your brush, it does the same thing, so you got some of the same characteristics. Here I want to maybe paint out, so I'm going to go with the minus. Same thing, you've got your opacity slider, and of course, the perfect brush is where you, I think you're going to like it here, so let's zoom in here to this image. So let's say that what the perfect brush does is this, is that if I keep that minus sign a little in the middle, as you can see in the gray, and I turn this on, it knows that it masks out everything that's inside there and versus outside. In other words, even if my, you see my brush goes to the dark area there, whatever that little minus sign there stays in, that's where it knows. It's not going to affect that area, right? So that's where it works there. Now, if you want to be, I use a Wacom tablet, so if you want to be precise and you want to do this on your own, then obviously you can uncheck that. But see what I just did earlier. See now it's already, whoops, let me go back. It's now even though I get close, see I'm, even though the minus sign is on the image, it's affecting that area. So that's magic right there. So I invite you to use that quite a bit, especially like if I'm using the dark areas here. If I want to get this off of the faces, I don't want to add contrast to the faces. Same thing here. I'm very careful. It's trying to render that a filter for me. I'm very careful just by touching the face there. I'm just barely tapping on it. Coming to the skin area, if I stay within there, lowering the brush, it's not affecting the area outside of that. It's just strictly staying there. So that's the beauty of that. So if you're not using a tablet um, to do that quickly, this has already been solved for you. Okay. So I'll remove that areas that I don't want, and it's giving you that overall effect. Now remember I said earlier, this is all personal preference. Um, you know, we've got a global effect here. Even sometimes, I'll, again, I usually do most of the effects by reducing some of that. I may come down to maybe 40% and paint out some of these areas so that it's, everything in the whole photograph is not sharp. That's one of my little quick tips. Uh, at first, it looks really cool that have everything so tack sharp and, and kind of grunge looking. But, you know, if you look at it closely, look at a, a photo that's unretouched, it doesn't have so much contrast, you'll notice that your eye is not so, you know, bouncing around trying to figure out which is the area you're supposed to look at. 
So many times I'm removing some of that air and areas that I don't want the viewer to look at. Maybe I don't want the building to be the center of attention. So I find myself going through here and removing carefully, of course, I'm doing this so quickly, removing some areas I don't necessarily want sharp. I know it looks great for landscape if you're shooting landscapes, but many times I try to keep away from that, and then that's just by preference. You may want this, it looks great, all sharp. Now down in this section here we talked about earlier, I clicked on one of those presets, but here if I want to now make the adjustments, you can now take that and maybe now create soft look to that, but it's what it's already done for you. A surreal look, that's, a, that's one of my favorite ones right there. It's not as, as grunge as the first one. That one's a look cleaner. And then, of course, your texture enhancer, same thing. And then each one below, I'm going to click this one here, the surreal one, allows you same thing. You can adjust same thing here, the details in that. You can look outside to the right, and you'll, you'll laugh. I'm pointing at my screen for you guys. <laughs> and then, of course, same with the medium detail. And you have to look to see what it does. This one affects kind of like the mid-tones. Take a look at that. I look at the wall behind it and then the same thing here with the large details so I invite you to play with the slider that's off and then that's maxed out take a look at that that's really a good effect as well so see you're allowed to go back and forth and same thing these were quick if I just went directly into the filter options without using the presets these are the first things I could have clicked on and already given you a jump start okay and then the last part is it'll allow you to protect the highlights. So if you don't want too much of that effect on the highlights, you can bring that down. Same with the shadow areas. If you want to kind of soften here, the doors were the sh shaded area. If I don't want to apply the effect there, I can turn that down. That's amazing. So you can, this is just amazing, all the different details. Same with the whites. Obviously, it's a little bit off because it's a, you have to fine-tune some of these because they're really sensitive but if you want to remove it off of there, and then obviously with blacks. And then vibrance as well. Sometimes, I don't know if any of you, have, I'm sure a lot of you have paid attention, but you notice when you add contrast to an image, it bumps up the color. So there's many times where you're in Lightroom, for example, and you have already have a high contrast image that you've done, uh, and you've color corrected, but now the coloring looks a little bit too warm on the skin tones. That's where you, I find myself sometimes backing this off. So if you're wondering why would they put a vibrant slider inside here this is not you know you would think traditionally this is not an area but if you notice that's a fact that anytime you increase contrast you know the, the software whether it's Photoshop Lightroom is trying to interpret what it, what does it mean contrast can be increasing shadows and the darks it can also mean increasing whites and highlights but there's also contrast colors so that's why if you ever notice wow what are my pictures increase in saturation is because contrast is global. It doesn't understand necessarily if it's a tone or a shade of color. So this is brilliant for them to do that because take a look here. If I bump this up, look at what it's done to the doors and the skin tone. And hopefully this is not too far for you guys, but it's really oversaturated that. So again, you'll find a lot of my images that after I've already added the contrast, I find myself backing up the vibrance or the color hue saturation tones because of that reason. Interesting, but that happens a lot. So if you look at your picture, wow, that's real, really colorful. That's what happens. Okay. Now let's add one more thing. The other beauty to this here, real quickly, is stacking. I mean, look at all the different. If you haven't had a chance to go through here, look at all the features. I wish we had time to click through every one of these, but you know, basically, I, I'll go through each one of these, click at it, look at it, add the textures, make the adjustments. So let's add one more effect here. Let's, some of my favorite, let's add a little texturizing to this as well now. So if you go through here, same thing. I can select one of the presets they've chosen or come back here. Now make sure, by the way, see here, if I click this once, it'll obviously add my another stack here. But to be sure, what I'll do is I'll hit plus. Now I've got a separate stack layer, if you want to call it. You notice now if this has been empty, here's blank. So that means that had I changed this beforehand, it would have manipulated what I had on this stack by, by hitting the plus sign. And now I start from scratch and add a new stack, which means I can add a new preset. Okay, so you got to make sure you do that. Or trust me, many, many times I'll just keep clicking away and I'm like, what happened to this layer? What happened to it? And that's why you either make sure you have to add that or you'll be wondering all that hard work you just did. So let's add one more. So let's add the texturizer. A lot of you will like this one because this one is, has a lot of the goodies in here of adding effects. So first of all, you have your texturizer selection. 
now it's going to ask you what type of effect do you want on here. Okay, so by clicking on some of these things, you can select: Do I want some of the papers? Do I want some of the different warm colors in here? Okay, you can just keep clicking through each one to see what kind of look that you like through there, right? And once you've done that, same thing here. It'll ask you what style you want. You can select the ones, a whole library there. Okay. So once again, if that gets too confusing for you at first, you want to see what it looks like, then again, I can minus this. It'll remove that. And now if I come back here, I'm going to look at all the options here. I'm going to come down to the bottom because this is giving you all the features here, every single one of them. So you literally have to go through each one and look at it. So if I click on some of these, you'll notice some have warm tones to it. That's why I spend hours in here. I'm like, wait a minute, this is too much fun in here. So I'm going to show you what happens here. If I double click that, it'll now add the a layer for you. Okay, so that's the secret. If you single click, it's going to keep it's going to remove that here. But if I double click, it's going to add that layer for us. So you can do it either way. You can add a plus or minus those layers. Okay. So now when I'm on here, I can now start editing this for me. Okay. Now obviously this um, gives you an option. This one says master. This does the whole thing. So whatever you even did below, you can reduce as well. Okay. So you have that option. Okay, let me re I'm going to go this way as well. I'm going to remove this here. You can notice that what it did here, let me back up because it's actually added it to that feature. So same thing applies here. If you hit a control um, to that, control Z, it'll keep going back for you. So I did that as well. Let me hit plus because I don't want it to affect this layer by double clicking it. So now I can click it here, single click, and make sure I have it as on a separate layer. So it gets a little confusing because if you're double clicking or single clicking, you're going to say, wait a minute, did it just add it to my layer? So I too have to make sure I'm going to keep this on it separate. Why I noticed that I didn't do that correctly because now you notice that I had only the master opacity slider affected, which means that anything, these two effects that I've done will reduce those two together. Okay, so that's what brings that to my attention. Now that the layer opacity is highlighted, now that I've added, made sure that I kept that texture on its own layer, now I can reduce that on its own. There you go, just like that. That's what I was looking for. So now in this case, not only do you have the effect, but now the blending options you can work as well. This is how I get some of those darker tones. So if I want to go multiply, you want to go darker color on that, I can play with that. This one I'm going to go multiply. I'm going to make it a little bit darker. Same thing here if you think you want to, if it pertains to protecting some of the highlights, shadow, or skin. But here I'm going to grab my masking brush. And my favorite feature again is I'm going to paint out. I can paint in or paint out. I'm going to zoom into this here one more time. Use my, air, uh, my bracket keys left and right. Remember, I've got the perfect brush. And just by clicking right there, you notice that? Look how big my brush is. But just by clicking on the face, take a look at that. It's not even affecting, for the most case, obviously. You know, it's doing the best it can, so that's, again, why I'm using a tablet. I can remove some of that effect in there. So even if I want this off of the tuxedo, I can do that. If I want this off the dress, I'm going to make the brush bigger so you can see. Take a look at that. That minus sign symbol is right in there, and it's not even affecting below that. And had I not done that, obviously it would have already affected out there. So this is how I'm able to get some pretty good masking and make it look like, wait a minute, was that actually that dark in advance? Was it actually that light? And you really can't tell, okay? But if I had not checked this, again, take a look at it. If I came here, click one time, see what it's doing here now? It's, it's already went out and surrounded the areas, and I don't want that in the image, so I'm going to control Z there. So there you go. Now, if you want the same thing, you come back here. If that's a little bit too strong for you, you can kind of back this off a little bit, okay? Or if you prefer it that way, you can change your blend modes. But ultimately, it's these blend modes that make a difference. If I want to brighten it, I just kind of play with the different features here, adding a little bit of color, the different hues in there. These are things that, again, you can go crazy with. But for the most part, the treatment is kind of like you're in Photoshop because you have the features of both your layers and your blending modes, and that's what's great for me. So again, I can keep adding stacks to this. So if I see other effects I want to add here, I can keep adding. If I want to keep this, all I have to do is hit apply, just like that. And what it's going to do is now it's going to create this. And it remembers those layers for you too, by the way. So if I bring this back in here, it's editable in here as well. So if for some reason you need to make an adjustment and the client says, hey, wait a minute, that's a little bit too much, I can come back in here as well. 
and make the adjustment too. So you're not limited to just that. You notice here it's creating a PSD here for you. And so again, it's fully editable. And if I take this into Photoshop, see here up on top, you have this. Let me hit the E key so I can get full screen. That's the original image, and that's the image that we just created. So you have an option of going from either taking this PSD into Photoshop or bringing it back into the effects. And there's numerous ones that I've done that are similar to that. Um, here's one, the same thing. I kind of was working on the sky a little bit. Here we go. Let's go to full screen. See that? But there's the before photo, just using one of the graduated filters and kind of darkening, et cetera, on there. So a lot of these are done right there. But again, last but not least, most of these effects, as I mentioned, are done probably when the client has already ordered a photo from me and, uh, and they've already said, okay, we want to do a wall portrait of some type. And then I'll usually bring that raw file directly maybe into Photoshop. So let's say that I'm here and um, give you a quick example here real fast. Let's say I'm here in Lightroom, for example, and, and I'm not sure yet, but let's say, uh, and this could be probably from the client's file. Let's just say I may have grabbed the raw file from the client. And so many times if I need to do my regular retouching first, I'll edit in Photoshop. That's where I'm going to do my retouching. Um, if I need to do like facial retouching or we need to remove something from the background, I need to liquefy somebody, um, which I know we never do, right? Then I'll start here and do all some of that, as I say, the heavy lifting I'll do here in Photoshop um, of some of the things that I can. Then that's when I'll come in here to the suite and maybe that's my final, that's kind of like the grand finale for those of us that are power users. We've already adjusted this here. So if I said, hey, guess what? Now I want to make this a black and white. You know, I'll click on that and now I'll come in here and you start working off of that. If I say, no, maybe I, I'd rather do adding effect, I can do that as well. But it's your option. Either way, you can select your workflow, whether you prefer to work directly in a standalone, whether you prefer to work in Lightroom, either one. I've got some great images either way. And um, So, yeah, so if there's any questions, again, I, I wish I could kind of go step by step. It, again, I, I always mention that the Lightroom portion for me starts out by, um, again, a, a very simple fine tone making sure my whites have detail and uh, the darks have detail. And then when I go into adding the, the effect, you notice that, you know, contrast is going to build up quickly. So you don't need to overdo that. So most of these that I'm doing, I'll make sure that I have detail in advance. Again, like whether it's the hair, see that, I'll make sure they're detailed. And that's my secret. Before I go to any of these um, plugins or software, et cetera, I just make sure they're detailed in, in all those shadow highlights because you're going to add contrast. In, that so anyway so hopefully you got at least one or two quick tips I wish we had about six more hours and I could kind of give you a little more features there but I, I invite you to do uh, two things one obviously if you if you don't have it yet download the trial play with it I mean there's no you know you, there's so many features in there you've got to go through each one and, and play with each each of the sliders max them out like I do as I say get your money's worth and then number two if you're already a user of this same thing you know that this is it's been inspiring to me because I can create a lot of these things in Photoshop, but the secret for me is doing a volume of weddings is we need to duplicate this. And if you want to create a style, the presets have helped with that. So again, I invite you to try that and um, hopefully uh, you picked up at least one or two things. And um, thank you for listening, guys. Turn this over to Liz and I'm sure we'll have some other ones uh, soon. Thank you, guys.